Hey everybody, welcome. This is Two Ed Tech Guys Take Questions and Share Cool Stuff. And we have had such fun not getting started on time. Thank you very, very much. Uh, and so what, what this is, is this is just a little shindig that Richard Byrne and I do on a weekly basis. Uh, I'd already remembered. Oh my goodness. This is a day when like he, he, he remembered he didn't need this slide, but I've already wasted time on it. Crazy. All right. And thank you. Thank you for joining. Thank you for watching this. If you're watching it as a recording, uh, we've got all of these kind of cool people in, in, the, uh, in, in the audience, we'll call you. All right. We're, we're just calling it the cool team. I think that's, uh, that's probably a good way to do it. Um, and, uh, and yeah, we want to pass out a few other thanks as well, such as to all the good people at the Kraft Center for Innovation, Foothill College, Los Altos Hills, California. Go merit 20. And some people would, might look at this particular slide and wonder, what is this free tech for teachers thing? Richard, please enlighten us. It's about a little blog that I started a long, long time ago in a galaxy far away called 2007. It's a little, little thing I did to start writing down all the cool stuff I was finding online and dabbling with and trying in my classroom. And 13 years later, and 15,000 something blog posts later, it's still going. Style points to you, my friend, all right? My little nonprofit going for 15 years, but considerably fewer blog posts would be Next Vista for Learning, nextvista.org. What is that you say? I am so glad you asked. It is a library of videos by and for teachers and students everywhere. Free to use, free to contribute to, free to download from, all for a student audience, all screen content. My own little attempt to save the universe from ignorance, one creative video at a time. If you are not an, a native English speaker and have no idea what I just said, I apologize, uh, but write me and I'll, I'll write all that down for you. All right, so uh, later this afternoon, later this afternoon, we will have another webinar that Susan Stewart, the, the wonderfully cool lady in Fowler Unified School District in California, and I do, called Activities Across Grade Levels. And today it's called, it's, <laughs> the topic is synchronous engagement, as in how to engage students when you are online with them synchronously. So. Uh, feel free to join in for that as well. Same link to where you can get uh, registered for that as you registered for this one. And I'll get that in the chat in a minute as well. Wait, Peggy says, amazing how the captioning keeps up with their fast talking. That is amazing. I'm still waiting though for the captioning to learn to punctuate sentences, which it has yet to do. This is one very, very long sentence that we already have and will become longer, so you know. All right, how's this gonna work today? What we're gonna do, is we're gonna take some questions and then we're gonna share a cool thing. Then we're gonna take some more questions, share another cool thing, take some questions, and then wind it down. That's just how we're, how we're using it. So the very first question is actually in the chat at the moment. Which caption service are you using? This is just Google Slides. When you hover over the little piece here in Google Slides, caption appears and you just click there and it just happens. It's like magic, like this. Let's go to the next question. Richard, why don't you launch us into the set we've got awaiting? Okay. All right. All right. So let's go into that. Before I do that, Brockville is 0 0.01 degrees farther north than my house. I just <laughs> measured it in Google Earth. Thank you, Google Earth. So we have the conclusion wait, to that saga. Thank wait, wait. You. So let me catch people up on this. Before we started the recording, my good friend Chris in Canada, who, by the way, has been recognized by the British motion picture, I'm messing up the name of their organ, as having created one of the finest commercials of the last 25 years. He's a videographer with tons of talent. And he learned about this fairly recently, props to Chris. Now, before we started the recording, we were talking about, is Chris, who is in Ontario, actually south of Richard, who's in Maine? And then, so, so we had this particular look at a map together. We were trying to decide, oh, we think, we think that, that Brockville is probably north of, of Richard, but Richard, and, and, and here's, here's the point I'm about to make. Richard just figured out he's 0 0.01 degrees farther north, Brockville is 0 0.01 degrees farther north than your house, which is to say, if Chris lives on the south side of Brockville, I may be right. Ah! <laughs> Some of you are right. right. Get on with your show. Okay, fine, fine. All right, so Richard, what, what, is, that, what is our first question? All right, our first question is, how do you use Google Earth to figure that out? And the answer is, you can simply type it into Google Earth, and in the bottom lower right corner, it, if you hover over the place marker that it puts there, it will show you the degrees of latitude and longitude. So that's cool. But our real first question comes from Dwayne, who said, 
can Edpuzzle use, be used by students in place of Timeline.ly? Timeline yeah. uh, I would say yes, Timeline.ly is good, uh, but it depends on what you're, like a lot of things, what, you're tr what are you trying to do? Uh, Timeline.ly is a tool that you can use to annotate videos and add little comments to it. Edpuzzle gives you a lot more features. So it depends on how much, how much do you want, right? That, that, that's what it comes down to. The answer, short answer is yes. Longer answer is you might not need to. So Does that make sense? Uh, you know, it does make sense. Uh, I, I want to add a thought to that as well, which is not that, right? But, but that thought would be this. Edpuzzle and Timelinely both allow you to annotate video. So, so if you want someone to watch a video, have it stop where you say, all right, pay close attention to what's happening next. It will change your life or, or whatever it is you want to say or, or add some comments or even add like a, an image or, or in Timelinely even a video to watch while this video is paused. You can do that. Edpuzzle is built for teachers to be a thing where in addition to doing those kinds of things, it also will ask questions. You can record those things. You can get the answers to the questions and, and it can grade them for you if it's simple, multiple choice, you know, that kind of stuff, right? It also integrates well with Google Classroom. Now you hear about integration with Google Classroom. The truth is that any link effectively integrates with Classroom, right? So, so using both of these is a cool thing. And I would say, try them out see what you think, or even better, have kids try it out uh, where they are annotating a video and they're taking some video that somebody has made and, and their, their challenge is to answer this question. How do we validate the information in the video? So what, when they're annotating the video, what they're doing, and Timeline is probably better for this because it's a simpler tool because it doesn't have all of the teacher stuff in it. Um, instead, what happens is they get so far in the video and then they stop the, vi stop, stop the video in annotating it in order to be able to say, uh, at this point, the speaker says, blah, 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 blah. We check this and this and this and find this. So if what you're trying to do is get kids to validate information, uh, timeline might be like a really, really good tool to, to use to do that. Yeah, both good options. And, and, and just to muddy the water a little bit more, Absolutely. I'll throw in, I'll throw in Biologs, which is a tool for posting discussion around the video. So if you're not, if you're just looking to have kids kind of add some comments into the timeline and, and you know have a little back and forth with them, Biologs is a nice little tool as well. Uh, so check that out as well. All right. And that's that's a nice making up of a name that hadn't been uh, taken for a domain name. I, I would say, by the way. Yeah, that's uh, University of Minnesota, I believe, is where that actually started. Oh wow, cool. So cool, cool, cool. Very cool. Let's, uh, let's actually, let's do this. Let's jump, it's a bit early, but let's jump into the first cool share because, you know, it's just that time of year. What does he say? What, what he says that, why does he mean? Ah, uh, fall foliage map. Uh, all right, so Richard, tell us about this. This is cool. Uh, I, I, love, I love fall, as I was telling Rushton before, I want to name one of my daughters Summer Autumn because I love the autumn so much in that transition, but I was overruled by the better half at home. Uh, you know, you carry the child for nine months, I guess you get more of a say. But anyway, <laughs> that's beside the point. Uh, the fall foliage map from smokymountains.com, I believe it's the website. It's an interactive map that over time, you'll there's a little slider down below where you can predict what's the fall foliage going to look like at a certain time of the year? So you can use a little time slider along the bottom of it, and you'll see that the, you know, the leaves, you know, as you go south, they change. So that's really cool. Uh, and I put that link in there uh, as part of a larger blog post that I published this morning all about learning about fall colors. And there's a couple of cool videos in there. There's a couple of Cool video from SciShow Kids, one of my favorite YouTube channels is SciShow Kids, uh, produced by the conglomerate of Hank and John Green, but not hosted by Hank and John Green themselves. Kind of an offshoot of Crash Course. Uh, I, I love the SciShow Kids. It's also a video in there from Reactions, which is the American Chemical Society or American Chemist Society. And they have some cool videos about the chemistry that happens when leaves change. So check it out. That is cool stuff. 
Uh, but of course, we are used to cool stuff from you, my friend. This is a part of how we, we build a show. Two EdTech guys take questions and share cool stuff. At some point, you watching from home might decide that's not all that cool. If ever that happens, and I kind of doubt it, but if it does, just write us and be like, I need something cooler. I will send you something cooler. You would do that for me? I would. You're so nice. Happy to help. All right. So let's get to some more questions. All right. All right so more questions. What you got? So question from Sue, who asked, is, she says two questions, actually. For, I'll, I'll, I'll take the second one first. Hmm. I've been searching for information about how to make hyperdocs more accessible for students with disabilities, especially a person who is blind. I found one mention of creating a second, more linear version that can be handled by a speech reader but nothing about what that might look like or whether there are ways to reformat existing templates so that's not necessary. Any suggestions? And my suggestion is a great tool called Grackle. I'll put, it, I'll put the link in the chat right now. You can find it at grackledocs.com. Grackle offers a Google Slides, Google Docs, and a Google Sheets add-on that will evaluate your document slides or sheets for accessibility. And not only will it evaluate it, it will tell you what you can do to improve the accessibility of the materials you make in those tools. I use it quite a lot these days. Really does a good job of saying, hey, you, want to, you might need to use a header here or your color scheme is terrible, change your color here, or it does very good things like that. Uh, so I, I would try using Grackle Docs before you, you know, completely reinvent your, you know, get a little guidance before you completely reinvent your template. Uh, what do you think, Rushton? Well, first of all, that's really cool. I, I had not heard of Grackle Docs, so that sounds, that sounds awesome. Um, I would uh, I would say that depending on what you're trying to do uh, with uh, with accessibility in a doc, I mean, if what you're trying to do is say I, I want I want this story to be a story that my uh, my kids who need screen readers can follow all the more easily, right? There are other tools out there, uh, so I'm I'm quite the fan of Book Creator. Book Creator is a really good one for adding text and adding audio pieces or video pieces kind of straight from the tool into this, this digital book that gets created. Uh, and you can have it read uh, just at a click. Uh, if you are on a device with a lot of uh, screen reading vocal options, you've got that as well. Like Macs are good on that front. But, uh, but yeah, give, give Book Creator a look. Great, great tool. And a question jumped into the chat for us, by the way. Oh, good. And, and it could not be a better one for you, Richard. Do you have a suggestion for a platform for blogs? I want to get AP high school English students to compose blogs. Karen Walker, excellent question. So Richard, what do you think? So I would say if you are a G Suite for Education school, you might want to use Blogger. Otherwise, I would use EduBlogs. Um, the reason that I would, uh, and even if you are a GC for education school, I still might use EduBlogs these days uh, because EduBlogs does a couple of things that you can't really do well in Blogger. Mm. Uh, number one being that you have better management of your student accounts. So as a teacher, you have better management of your student accounts. The other thing that's nice about EduBlogs is it runs on the WordPress platform. It runs on the WordPress software. WordPress is open source software. So if for some reason down the road, you want to have your students, let's say, export all of their blog entries so they can then put them into another blog, you can do that. You have that capability in there. Uh, not, the, not to mention the fact that EduBlogs just has great uh, customer service, if you will. Even if you're using the free version, they have great, great support for teachers. But really, I think the, the big thing is that you have a lot better control over uh, student accounts, just helping kids get set up. You know, that, that's always a, always a hurdle. But I, I, so I love EduBlogs for that. Anything that runs on the WordPress platform, I really like. And I've said for years, if I was starting freetechforteachers.com over again, I would have started, I would start it on WordPress. I would do it on WordPress. So there's that. Cool. Um, yeah. 
Karen, I'll add that if uh, that you've got AP high school uh, kiddos working with AP English in high school, uh, those of you who might teach the youngest kids, consider Kid Blog. Um, I, I I haven't used it much myself, but I have seen like kindergarten and first grade teachers use this to get kids writing, which is pretty impressive. Kid Blog is uh, is one of those where let me just get that into the kidblog.org. Kidblog.org it is indeed. If you'd get that into the chat, that would be another level of awesome. Uh, <laughs> but but just another way, you know, the more kids are writing, right, the better, right? Uh, and then if you can get them to go from writing something to actually thinking about what it is they wrote and whether it's good, <laughs> all the better. Uh, so so let's let's think along those lines. And Richard, I am ready to share a cool thing. You are? Okay. Now, what you guys are about to see, uh, you remember Prezi? Now, Prezi is, is that, is that uh, presentation tool where, you know, kind of zooms in and out. And if you did it, what I'll call the wrong way, people were having to reach for Dramamine, you know, like what, what they're doing. And yet, it's a visually cool thing. What they have come out with very recently is a, is, a, is a Prezi video tool. And what it allows you to do is to, is to record a video directly into the tool. And I'm gonna show you what I did last night, just messing with it a little bit, right? So this is, this is one of those things where I'd played with it for all of you know, a few minutes before I, I gave this a shot. So let me do the, the, the switch, from, like the new share switch, boom. This is, this is Prezi video. And this is the video that I made last night. So here we go. Well, thank you very much for joining us. We love being able to share our ideas and the cool stuff that we come across with you. If you have questions, just let us know. Hope you'll also pay a little attention to our other Next Vista uh, webinar, which is happening later this afternoon, 3.30 Pacific, 6.30 Eastern, which is called Activities Across Grade Levels. And we look at different topics and different tools and how they might be useful at varying grade levels, K2, 3 through 5, middle school, high school, and there's a lot of ideas for everybody with those. So you rock for taking this in. I hope that uh, you learned something cool and that you'll... Denied on finishing that up. <laughs> All right. Uh, clearly, that, that's, what, that's what happens when you start with a new tool. However, you can see kind of how it's coming together, right, in terms of, you know, just kind of doing some interesting uh, background graphics for you and all, or foreground, I guess it is, uh, and and all that's kind of fun. You know, I, I, I kind of like seeing you know like a, a tool reinvent itself in, in that way. So, Prezi video, pretty cool stuff. And Richard, thank you for adding those different pieces into the chat. And With thank that, you to Peggy who beat me to it actually. Oh <laughs> well, you know, Pe Peggy has actually got serious speed on that front. That's just that's, that's a part of, of Peggy's overall universal coolness that we all recognize and bow to. Humble bow. Humble bow. Talk to us. What's the next question? Next question. Uh, this one came from John, and he says we are back in person at school, but wearing masks and sitting six feet apart. I was wondering if you had any suggestions for running a class or small group discussion like a breakout. I teach seventh and eighth grade language arts. I actually did, am in a very similar situation and did this uh, on Tuesday with my students. So I don't have probably as many students as John did, um, but I had nine students. So I had nine students in my, in my room. Uh, and what I did is I created three different Google Docs okay, that had questions in them okay, that I wanted kids to chat about. And so they used a chat function in Google Docs. Okay. Use a chat function in Google Docs because they're, they're you know, they're, they can't like huddle up and whisper next to each other. Okay. So they did a chat function in Google Docs and I had the Google Docs, all, all the Google Docs open on my screen so I could kind of see like I was kind of hopping between tabs, but I could kind of see what was happening in all of them, right? And so the kids were chatting in the Google Docs. Right? Each group had their own. I was monitoring it with my multiple tabs to see all the chats. And then I would just kind of call out, hey, this is a good point made by Matt. You know, Matt raised a good point about network security here. Let's all look at what Matt was just saying. Right? That's how I did it. Uh, so they still had like the small little chats of the, the three each group, 
but then I just kind of like yelled aloud the highlights, if you will, to the class. That was my idea. It went pretty well from my perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the students got it. You know, they, they got it for the most part. Um, so that's what I did. Uh, now, granted, I only did that for about seven-ish minutes. I let them chat because I was afraid if I went any longer than that, it was going to end up with conversations about Halo or whatever <laughs> other thing that they were talking about that day. Right? Uh, so. I, take it, I take it that Halo comes up as a topic of conversation for them on a somewhat regular basis. Uh, sometimes, yes. Okay, yes. fair enough. Uh, Animal Crossing actually comes up more often. There you go. Not um, animals crossing, but Animal Crossing. <laughs> so, so I want to build off of something Richard just talked about. Um, you know, when you're when you're talking about having people develop discussions, one of the natural things to do, by the way, uh, in in the world of Zoom, is to send students into breakout rooms. Uh, Zoom has yet to uh, to make it so that a teacher can look at all breakout rooms at once which would be useful and hopefully is on the way. Zoom people, are you listening? However, um, there are some workarounds that are not that bad. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you just kind of one suggestion here. And this is gonna be meta because I'm using the slides we're using. What? Now, check this out. If you have created a slide deck and students are in teams are working on specific slides, and then you go down here and you shift from what we will simply call traditional slide tool view to grid view. You can then see like a lot of slides at once and depending on the number of folks you got, you, you can like make it smaller if you need to, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, you might be able to, to just watch them develop their ideas as they populate a slide. And if nothing's happening on a particular slide, you might go over to that group and say, so where are we? Uh, so, so that would be like another way to to think about how you're working with uh, with with different with different things that are, are supposed to be happening in terms of discussion. Hopefully, hopefully useful to you. Cool, very cool. Uh, all right, so where do, where did I left off? I just left off somewhere and forgot where I was. Uh, where was I? We were on okay. the discussion one there. So, yeah, sorry. That, that, thank you. Thank you. I was trying to find the link for the next thing that I wanted to that I wanted to talk about at the same Fair time. Enough. All right. So, uh, Robbie was at, was asking me or sent me an email. What are your thoughts on using this check-in sheet, a Google form, as a way of keeping attendance for virtual teachers? Robbie was referring to a Google form that I did a demo of in a video uh, earlier this week. I'm using a Google form as a check-in, check-out for my physical classroom. Like in the past, I've always been really lax about, okay, yeah, you go to the bathroom, go to the bathroom, whatever, go to the bathroom, come back, you know, don't, don't take forever. But because of contact tracing, I now have to like, you know, really keep track of it. So I'm using a Google form that kids fill out when they leave and they fill it out and they come back and it's just their name, time they left, time they came back and where they went. Right. Uh, and yeah, you could totally do that with for your for your virtual attendance for virtual teaching. The one problem you're going to run into is if you have to use that data in your SIS in your student information system, you might find that it's not really easy to move it from your Google form into your SIS. Right? So that's why I'm just using it. I like when I take attendance. I still take attendance in Infinite Campus, which is our school's uh, student information system, but for like classroom stuff, you know, signing out to go to the bathroom, signing out to go to the, you know, to go to the cafeteria or whatever, I just do that in a Google form, keep track of it that way. Um, so yeah, like, like a lot of things when it comes down to like student data, it's how, how legal does it need to be, right? Like whether or not someone went to the bathroom for two minutes or three minutes, probably not going to be a big deal in the grand scheme of things. Whether or not they were at school or whether or not they showed up for class is a big deal. So I'm doing that in Infinite Campus still. Fair enough. I think I'm just going to take us right to the next question, uh, yeah. which is from Marie. And she says, I tried Common Craft. There seems to be a fee to use their products. 
Is there any free access to some of their products? Richard, what do you know about Common Craft? I know a lot about Common Craft. Full disclosure, Lee and Sashi are friends of mine. Uh, so I will say that Common Craft has, gives you the option to preview all their videos. So you can watch all their videos without paying for them. However, they have a big watermark on it. It says for evaluation purposes only. And so those aren't embeddable and they're not, um, what's the word? They're not captioned. There's a lot of restrictions on them so that you, they're, like, they're not designed for you to broadcast them in your classroom. So you can preview all of them for free, but otherwise it's a, it is a subscription service. Um, that said, I think it's, you know, I, I paid for the videos myself many times uh, back when they sold them as individual videos. I think it's well worth the money, but again, I'm a little, I have a little bit of a bias there. Rustin, you had a good idea though. You know, uh, one of the things about Common Craft is that it represents a style of, of video. I mean, they, they, are, they are people, uh, Lee and Sasha are people who, who essentially launched a style of, of, of videos. And uh, some years ago, a, a highly talented teacher named Lauren Uyeshiro uh, tried her hand at making uh, a, a Common Craft style video, which I have in the chat. It's on adding three and four digit numbers. Uh, I'll shift over so we can kind of take a quick look at it. You can get kind of an idea of what this looks like. Right, and you know, they actually start by by whistling the uh, the theme. I, I've I've turned, and 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 then once they get into it, what they're doing is they're moving they're moving pieces on and off the table, right, in order to be able to really discuss how this works. So you know, you see like like the hand hand stuff comes up, and here we go. We've got this, and we're going to talk about this a little bit, uh, and then I'm going to uh, pull back, and then we're going to move that out of the way, and uh, we're we're going to bring something else in. This is, the, this is the style of the Common Craft video. Now, when you think about having kids make videos, one of the cool things you can do is show them a lot of different kinds of videos in order to get them in a space where they're saying, hey, I kind of like this style of video. I want to do this this way, right? And, and that's, that's actually, I think, a real strong thing. What I'll do is I'll toss another item in the chat that has 24 different student videos in it uh, that, that you can use to, uh, to prompt kids to think about the different ways they can make a video. And so some of these videos are videos where, um, where kids have narrated uh, you know, artwork they've done or images. Some of them are, uh, are, are stop motion videos. There's, there's just a lot of different kinds of videos and a lot of different things to see. So I've just tossed another link into the chat that can help you with that. And so there are some ideas for you with regard to that. Richard, I'd say let's, let's see if we can s slip one more question in. All right, let's get in there. Uh, let's go for... Oh gosh. Oh yeah. Where, where's, where was it? Okay. I was watching one of your Flipgrid tutorial videos and noticed you had student view and teacher view bubbles on your screen. What did you do to make those appear? So that is not something that's in Flipgrid. Uh, the video that I made about Flipgrid where I showed student view and teacher view and had like bubbles to say, this is teacher view, this is student view. I did that in, uh, in screencast, Screencast-O-Matic after I recorded the screencast. So I recorded the screencast and then Screencast-O-Matic has some tools you can use to overlay speech bubbles on top of the screen. And that's how I did it. Uh, Screencast-O-Matic.com, great tool for doing some, some screencasting, but also some editing after the fact. I could have done the same thing in, in uh, iMovie or Wii Video but Screencast-O-Matic was just quick and easy. That's how I did it. Very nice. So you guys know the purpose that we have in doing this little, little webinar is to give you some good ideas to kind of hopefully allow you to see some possibilities and tools you haven't seen before, uh, to get some thoughts on, on how we can teach better online. But at core, our job is to take care of our kiddos and their learning. And to do that, we need to take care of ourselves, as I say every week, right? Make sure you're getting a little extra exercise, you're getting that walk in, you're getting away from the screen from time to time. 
this is a crazy, crazy time. And we just need to be making sure we're taking care of ourselves so that we've got the energy ready for when that kid needs us to come up with something clever. Speaking of something clever, <laughs> if you have not signed up for my newsletter, I would, I would encourage you to do this. You might say, why, why should I bother doing that? Well, there's actually several reasons. One is that the newsletter has loads of good things each month that you might want to watch or read or try. Uh, we talk about all sorts of good, uh, uh, you know, good projects that are going on, things that, that are cool with regard to how uh, schools are promoting like their strong programs. There's just like a lot there. Uh, so I've added that link in there and you're like, what, that's it? Nope, that's not it. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna hand out, I'm gonna hand out a caffeine card to somebody. You're like, what, a caffeine card? A caffeine card. The whole idea with a caffeine card is it's just better to win a Starbucks card and not need to than to need to and not win a Starbucks card. So uh, last week we had a number of people sign up and I forgot to do the drawing and I figured that out this morning. So what did I do? I sent every last one of them a card. What? That's just an extra little bonus to their day. I think that's awesome. Wee! So feel free. And if you're like, but I'm already on your, your, your list, just fill it out and at the end be like, I'm already on the list, but I hope to win. Totally good. Totally good. Feel free. All right, guys. So that's the newsletter info right there. I hope, I hope you win the card. You're like, wow, you know, it's nice of you to wish me that. I just wish that to everybody, but this time just one. There you go. Anyway, I have a blog, Inspiring Improvement, that I hope will be useful to you. I have written some books and via these slides, because we give away the slides too. Crazy. All right. You can find out more about them. I would love for you to talk to me about like how to like help your team become better at what they do. Love doing that kind of thing. So just feel free to stay in touch. Already made the slide for next week. No, no, no. Thank you. All right. And you might look at these and be like, hey, these, these are people walking away from each other. No, this is me and Richard, like making sure we got all the bases covered. What? All right. Good stuff. All right. So tell us about this right here, Richard. So that means we'll be wearing tuxedos next week as well, Rushton. Yeah, it, that could happen. It's mathematically possible that it could happen. All right. All right. I don't, I don't want to be overdressed. So if you have not picked up your copy of the Practical EdTech Handbook, don't worry. It's still free. You can get it at practicaledtech.com slash weekly dash newsletter and sign up for my newsletter. You'll get it delivered to your inbox. 64 pages of my favorite EdTech tools and tips, including a whole big section about accessibility, which is something we talked about today. If you'd already read it, you would know about Crackle Docs and accessibility. Highly featured in there. That's one of the things I featured in there. Uh, anyway, so carry on, carry on to the next slide. Absolutely. And go let, let me let you know, Marcy is like, link please, wants that link. Right, right. So, so let's, let's make sure we've got that. Marcy, we will get that in, in the chat, I promise. Next slide. All right. So next slide is my YouTube channel. Go to my YouTube channel, uh, bit.ly.com slash RMB YouTube. And you can find all manner of tutorials on all kinds of things. A lot of Google stuff, including the answer to the question that's in the Q&A. Can you put videos in Google Slides? Yes, you can. I've got a video on how to do that right in there. If you have a question for me, send me an email, richard at burn.media. If you're wondering where all of these questions came from, they come from my inbox and Rustin's inbox. Send us emails. We'll answer them eventually. <laughs> we'll get all caught up uh, or tweet at me at RM Burn. That's it. Excellent. My name is Rushton Hurley. I'm a former high school teacher of Japanese language, a former principal of a K-12 school, a former principal of an online high school, and now I run a little nonprofit to save the world from ignorance. Uh, I also help schools around the world look at how they, they do what they do in ways that allow them to better tell their stories to their communities and to improve the professional and personal experiences of the teaching and non-teaching staffs that they have. So if any of that's of interest to you, feel free to stay in touch. What we are about to do is wind this recording down, which has gone a little bit long, but then again, I started late. Sorry, everybody. Um, and, uh, and what we'll do is we'll probably take another few questions, just like once we get finished, uh, just because that, that's something we do. But we do want to thank you very much for joining us. We hope you picked up something fun and that you are going to have a wonderful rest of your Thursday, however long that may be.